points, we're going to go through the quadrant and the shoulder lock. These are probably two of the um, more difficult techniques to master, so just keep practicing. But they're really, really effective. When you're good at them, they can be used both as assessment and treatment techniques. So the quadrant is really just, you'll see on the handout there's a bell curve there. And what you're doing is you're adding in three different components of motion. You're adding in flexion, abduction, and external rotation. So these are commonly where a lot of patients are going to have their issues. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my hand, my right hand, up and under her scapula. Okay, so my fingertips are stabilizing here. If you can't see, come around. All right, my other hand I'm supporting at the elbow. Excuse me. You really want them off the table, and if the patient feels unstable, you can kick your legs diagonally toward the other corner there. There you go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to essentially plot my point. So I'm starting in um, flexion, abduction, and pretty neutral external rotation here. And I'm just going to plot my points further and further into external rotation, more into abduction, and work my way up into flexion. You doing okay? What I'm looking for is symptom provocation. And what you'll find is that the apex, right about here in the bell curve, where there's quite a bit of external rotation and abduction and flexion at that height of the apex, this is where most of the people have issues. So they might feel catching or pain in there. A lot of throwers have this issue. So then, if she were to have issues, what I could do is my treatment technique is I could just stay here and just mobilize and just doing a PA movement. And if it's a pain patient, I would just start with a you know grade two or grade three. All right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I could just find where that issue is and work within that range. 30 second out. If it's pain dominant, you can go up to 60 if it's stiff dominant. And then I can just easily reassess by taking her back into that motion and see if it's any better. So usually when I'm doing the quadrant as an assessment, if they have issues, while I have them in that position, I'm just going to do the treatment right then and there. Okay. Now, shoulder block. I'm going to have you, excuse me, just a smidge of that right. Okay. So what I'm going to do, same hand position, so up and over the scapula this way. This time I'm going to switch my grip. Okay, so before I was here, now I'm just going to change my hand position, and now I'm going to pull her into more, this may hurt, so you just tell me, okay? okay. So I'm going to push her into extension, abduction, and internal rotation. Yeah, that hurts. Okay. okay. So I'm not going to put her end range, but essentially what you're looking for is you want to put her in full extension and internal rotation until you feel like that shoulder's locked and it can't go anymore. Okay? So you have to make sure that the patient is really far off the table in order to get full range. So is the right hand pulling or it's just supporting? It, I'm pulling. This hand is just um, stabilizing the scapula. Okay. This hand is pulling her down into the extension mm -hmm. and then adding in the internal rotation. Okay? And you'll feel it. When you get full range and lock, you'll feel that it cannot go anymore. And this is a really good technique with um, throwers. Okay, When they're coming down this way, after the throw, the deceleration, a lot of pitchers have issues. So when you put them in that end range position, when you find that point of pain, you can then also mobilize here. And that's a very effective technique.